is my sign from the Occupy protests. Jesus, Nehemiah, Muhammad, said. Good stuff, man. You know, I used to pick at your father every Thursday. Every Thursday. Every Thursday? Wow. Wow. What a wasted life. Thank you. I think so, eh? A Polish interest my sign said. Pierre promised he'd legalize marijuana and he let us down. <laughs> <laughs> Wasted life trying to abolish interest rates. Yes, sir. You could call it the Russian solution, too. That's me being busted at the IMF World Bank Conference. 1982. I was alone. I had this occupy demonstration. Ten straight marches, ten straight weeks. Yes, sir. Just YouTube for Occupy Land Prophecy. For Argentine solution. There it is. Fun stuff, you know. It will fix the world by the end of the year. Just by reprogramming the bank's computers yeah. to get rid of interest. The old world with loan sharking, yes. The new world with everybody having a loan <laughs> starting. That's right, not death. Jesus Christ, why do you jump to ugly conclusions? You never ran a poker game? You ever see them loan shark the chips? Here's a tent giving a letter back? The chips shouldn't have interest. They lose their value if they have interest. Election number 76. Maybe 76 time lucky. Maybe 76 time lucky. How you doing? So, would you take some of your pay? In Ontario provincial bonds, which you have used to get hydro medical licensing bonuses. How many people do you think said no? Now, what would you keep saying? Would you think it would be Thanks again. Thank you guys for being so awesome. Uh, I picketed his dad for five years. I think Canada did that. Yeah, Yes, sir. I tease this guy. Every Thursday, every Thursday, I pick it in Parliament at 2 o'clock. That was nice to Pierre. He was always nice to me. You know, I beat him up on my like policies. To you. I like to tease you for it, but no. Thank you. He yeah, promised to legalize pot and he didn't. And that pisses me off. Who's going to for med pot engineer? This is Dean Terry Parker here. He's got to legalize marijuana. No, they never did it. They said they would. Anyway, I got seven cases in the Supreme Court and Terry's one of them. Watch us go. So, that's why I'm Johnny Engineer Turnbull talking about interest free poker chips. You just gotta go to your game and charge interest on the chips, tell me what happened. Yes, I'll talk about it tonight. They already used my software to do barter. Yes, it's true, in Greece. <laughs> they have computer barter in Greece now. Oh, it's kind of neat catching Justin here. If he's here, I'm gonna do a number on his daddy for not legalizing that's marijuana. That's Justin Trudeau? Yeah. It's funny, you know, he was Prime Minister while I picketed Parliament every Thursday. We are off. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is John Richardson. I, in fact, do have two true independent candidates, one being John Chernell, who some of you may know has run uh, a couple of times. Here, 30 years ago. This is essentially the fourth live debate, I believe. Yes, one, one, two, three, four. Okay. Yeah. Don't forget the one in the school, Brandon. <laughs> I didn't get an invite to that one. <laughs> well, you know, thing is, John, you are here tonight, and everybody. Kids got a bad example. Well, more on that later, perhaps. Okay, or maybe not, depending. Okay. Uh, I mean, given that, given that it doesn't change the balance of power at all in Parliament. Why does this election even matter to the voters in front of Danforth? And how, especially if you were elected, would this make a difference in their lives? Why it's important to vote for me? 
Well, this is the plume of radiation coming from Fukushima last year in April, and we all got hit with us right down in nuclear fallout. And on March 25th, Health Canada turned off all their fallout detectors, so all the pregnant women in BC weren't warned to stay indoors, and baby deaths tripled. Aww, oh, Stephen Harper's heroes to not cause a panic. But if you see my videos, I was screaming, take cover! All right, well now we're all gonna get a really big bunch of cancers, and you'll also find that I wanted to mass produce marijuana to fight those cancers, because marijuana cuts lung cancer tumor growth in half, the truth is coming out, The marijuana kills cancer, and marijuana's good for Alzheimer because it boosts brain cell growth. Yay! They're so sharp and they're so dull. So anyway, that's the thing. Now I see Justin Trudeau in the audience, and I picketed Parliament Hill for five years in the early 80s that my bankers are crooks and abolish interest rate sign. It's time, right? but the biggest disappointment of the whole Liberal Party was you guys never okay, came John, home with your promise to legalize marijuana. Thank you. So do it! I can't talk it. <laughs> Um, so we've had Justin Trudeau introduced here. Yeah, I swear to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, to all the candidates. This is a wonderful night for democracy. And I agree with you.
I was known as the professor at the Taj Mahal in Atlantic City. I was a teaching assistant of Canada's only mathematics and gambling course at Carleton University. I was busted so often they joked my son at the Ottawa police station had a revolving door. But they eventually legalized gambling so they wouldn't have to bust me no more. But who would I obey? Would I listen to me? What I think is right? What the people think is right? And my party thinks is right? Well, since I'm sharper than they are, and I can figure out winning strategy using math, I think I'd go with my estimations and my gambles, and that's why I am a professional winner. I found ways of doing stuff that are pretty neat. Printing up bonds. I got arrested digging in the IMF World Bank in 82, passing out the bond idea before Argentina used it. And then I brought it to the Project Greenwood by-election. Worst result later on, 16 votes. So it's not called the Broadway Greenwood solution, it's called the Argentine solution now of taking bonds in your paycheck instead of being broke. So I have an interview with a lady running a clinic in Brantford. I said, would you take bonds instead of nothing for your raise? And she went, of course. Well, of course you would if you got any brains. Who wants to sit on a picket line when you can create your own currency and tell them what to pay you with? But most people don't know about money reform, so you'll have to visit my site. Um, you know, I've been watching the television debates where not everybody attended. Um, hey, not everybody invited, I would have thought. <laughs> <laughs> now that you mention that, now that you mention that, um, I have been asked to, and I thought about whether to do this, I've decided to do this, to read a joint statement from the independent and small party candidates of Toronto Danforth on exactly that point. We, the independent and small party declaration of independence, we, the independent and small parties candidates of the Toronto Danforth by-election, wish to issue a joint statement at this time as the mainstream corporate media tends to marginalize the true voice of the people in favor of the established mainstream political parties. We feel that certain issues are not being addressed by these mainstream parties because they run contrary to the agenda of the corporate and banking systems that have been controlling the political agenda for some time. We as a group feel that Canada is in dire need for reforms to its system of governance. First of which is monetary reform and a return to utilizing the Bank of Canada to regain control of the issues of currency. Yeah. Yes, sir. Second, that a national initiative be undertaken to reform both the parliamentary and electoral systems to ensure a more accurate and fair system of governance. And lastly, and lastly, an end to the policies of globalization and integration to ensure Canadian sovereignty and self-determination. Without these issues being addressed, we believe democracy in Canada may become ineffective and in danger of disappearing completely. <laughs> Message delivered. <laughs> Going back to the, uh, the television debate, which is largely prompting my next question, and having attended the live debate, um, the first question that I think almost every single moderator asked was, so what's happening when you go to the door? Uh, you know, what are people telling you? This kind of stuff. And, um, what are, and, and, and your answers were, not necessarily each of you this language, but people are hurting, people are worried, people are concerned. Repeated over and over, families are having trouble making ends meet. Debt levels are high. Costs are rising. Taxes are increasing. I'm wondering if you could address, in a general sense, what you think the role of government is to assist people, either directly or assist people in helping themselves, either in a general sense. The role of government is to run a fair game. And that's enough. And no, I don't go door to door. Okay, I mean, uh, knocking on a few thousand doors, maybe they can do that, and come to a meeting and talking to a couple of hundred people, half moon party clappers, and then on TV with the tens of thousands, I don't get on. CPAC, Parliamentary Channel, same four. You know, and Rogers, same four or three, because the Tory ain't showing up, he's so bad. <laughs> Last month, TVO, Steve Pankin show, same three. Guaranteed nothing new. Anyway, I posted a video.
video. I went and took the video of these guys last night, and I threw in my comments with no restriction on time. And I cut it off, okay? And it's going to get what they deserve. Instead of me being able to answer just with one minute, now I can put off who's too long I want. So it's called Steve Pagan's Not All Candidates Debate. Go to YouTube tonight. You get to watch the whole boring show. Not one new idea. But we're looking forward. And look at how can we have a new idea when we don't have any new ideas in Ottawa either. So anyway, go catch that video. I had a lot of fun cutting these people up because when they take the time and I'm excluded and I'm being cheated, they're the ones cheated me. They benefited. And that's not sportsmanship, okay? If I was in your position, I wouldn't let anybody cheat my opponent. I want to beat them fair and square. What do you believe the government in general should do to increase the size of the economic pie to be able to make all things happen at once? I've been talking about increasing the size of the pie all night. You increase the size of the pie by ending up with more stuff. And you end up with more stuff when you end up with more jobs. And you end up with more jobs when you start off with more money and you've got to go find yourself some money first. Well, they haven't gone in. They've run out. They've admitted it. Bank of Canada's a good idea. Provincial bonds are just as good too. Actually, they're better because they've been proven. Now, yes, with an interest-free source of money, you can do what's called back tax. Right now, they front tax. They front tax you up front, and you've got to hope they don't waste it. And most of the time, they do. But a back tax is different. They borrow from the Bank of Canada interest-free, they finance all their stuff, and then they present you the bill for what they spend it on, and you get to see, at the end of it, what they spend it on, and then you pay your back tax. Well, it's a lot smarter paying your back tax when you see what you're getting than paying a front tax and hoping they don't rip you off, especially when you keep getting ripped off. So, back to the Argentine solution. The Bank of Canada could do it. It's like a Bank of Canada PayPal. Who knows PayPal? Log on to the Bank of Canada, open an account, cut checks to settle all your interest-bearing mortgages and debts, and then after that, all your payments go against the principal to the Bank of Canada interest-free sugar daddy bank in the sky. So it's just like <coughs> PayPal, but with no interest. And then you can settle all your debts, convert to stable, and then finally get out of debt someday. A year ago, something monumental happened, almost a year ago today, in fact. And that was the earthquake in Japan that um, caused severe damage to a large number of nuclear reactors. Um, I don't know what to believe in relation to this, but I mean, I have read things uh, suggesting that the damage was worse, or long run at least, than the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. I don't know anything about that, because I'm not a scientist, but I do recognize that it is an issue, and no discussion of a candidate the, to go to Ottawa would be complete without some questions in relationship to it. So. We know, recognizing that the demand for energy is insatiable, it's getting greater and greater. What about the question of nuclear energy? Well, to answer the question, the bombs in Japan had pounds of uranium, and the reactors, they have tons. And those tons of spent fuel, guess where they put them? They gotta put them in water. And where'd they put the water? At the bottom of the structure? No, on top. So if it cracks, it leaks. And just last week, a Japanese scientist said if it cracks again, it's the end. Hey, I watched that Japanese engineer crying on TV. He know what he did. So anyway, yeah, I studied some nuclear engineering. And there's nothing more stupid and dangerous than nuclear. And these plants are all over the place, and they can happen anywhere, so we have to decommission. We all agree. But they got no money. And that's why nothing's happening. And I got a way of paying people to decommission the nuclear, okay? So, and my final point is, that's what's so dangerous about nuclear radiation, fallout in particular. It's not like background radiation, same thing they say. Hey, a piece of plutonium a meter away is going to do so much damage, but when it moves into a centimeter, a hundred times closer, it's a hundred squared more deadly. And when it moves inside you, a micron away 
from your bone. It's not a million times more dangerous. It's a million square. And if it gets inside you, it burns out the circuits in your cells. Blow out a few spot switches and you've got a cell that won't stop growing. That's cancer. Well, baking soda binds with uranium. So you've got to take baking soda first so it binds with uranium before the uranium binds with you. Um, but what we're going to do is basically uh, have something going on where the candidates are going to have a chance to ask each other uh, questions. It's not an ominous. <laughs> I want to ask you a, one question. You are at the same boat as I am. You, I know that none of us get elected. What is your real motive? <laughs> Russia gets saved in their depression by using bond currencies, and I see you guys suffering and complaining full time about not enough money, not enough jobs. I come here with an alternative you can use. I'm an engineer. If I tell you to do this for it to work, it's not like them saying, we want something. You need this. We want you to have that. There's a difference between we want you to have something and here's how you can have it. So, I've run all these times over the years so that the guys who get elected go to Parliament. And then 30 years later, I can point at them and say, Hey, Steve Pankin, you heard 30 years ago about the Argentine solution. How come you stay stupid so long? <laughs> so, same thing with these winning candidates. They're going to have heard about how to fix the system when they get there. And who knows, they might remember something. But if they don't smoke, mark, smoke marijuana, they probably haven't done enough brain cells. <laughs> Pull one, anyone? Who do I get now? The Green Party candidate! Oh. <laughs> Alright, the other day, I bet a hundred dollars. Climate Gate, two years ago, they discovered that the hockey stick graph was a fraud! They massaged the data, and they even used a trick to hide the decline! Then they argued, oh, scientists use tricks all the time. I said, it ain't the trick I'm mad about, it's the word hide! Well, guess what? Temperatures have been going down. And I think these people should be charged for murder for every person found frozen to death in Bermuda shorts. Except for the warning. So, I bet a hundred dollars the temperatures have been going down at the last meeting. And I'm going to ask the lady and the MVP and the liberal who've all talked about man-made global warning, why won't you take my hundred dollar bet when I say it's been getting colder and they've been lying to us? For the record, John, I took your bet. I also want to point out that John is deeply mistaken about what hide the decline meant. Yeah, it's funny. It's people think that hide the decline means, means that there's a decline in temperature. That isn't actually what they were referring to. Hide the decline in popularity? No. They were actually talking about, and I know this because I am the climate change critic for the Green Party. So, what they were referring to was actually a decline in what should have been the temperatures based on the tree ring data when temperatures were actually going up. That's what they wanted to hide because they've been using tree ring data to recover. And, and I, I do think this is a problem. I do think that it, it sheds some kind of problem into the science and I am looking into it. But there is a lot of different strings that, that show that the climate science is right. I bet it going down. John, I can't answer if you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> but the truth is that what they were looking at was that the tree ring data had been matching, correlating with the temperature for many years, but it was going down in the last 20 years as temperatures were going up and that's what they wanted to hide. They hid it 
by at that point saying, you know what, we're going to use the real temperatures from now on because we don't trust the free data. That's what they referred to. Did you You're wrong. Yeah. yeah. And the temperatures are going up. Thank you. If there was a vote on um, repealing laws that uh, uh, punish people for crimes that where there's no victim, victimless crimes, like uh, sex work and uh, marijuana possession. How would you vote? Hmm. I think it has to be more specific than that. Would you like it to be about sex trade or about marijuana? Let's do marijuana. Sure. Can we do marijuana? Okay. <laughs> Watch it. Oh, now I've got your attention. Marijuana is a very interesting topic. Um, first of all, I think that people should be able to, if they're able to drink alcohol freely, they should be able to smoke marijuana. <laughs> and I'm this people, planet, profits guy, so I'm going to slide in a thing about profits, okay? Oh, I'm, t I'm being timed on this, i got to be fast. Okay, so there's billions and billions and billions of dollars going under the table. That money could be used to help people uh, in rehab. It could be used in all kinds of ways. So I think marijuana should be decriminalized and legalized. Because it doesn't hurt anybody. Uh, and also, I have, a, I have three boys who are going to be teenagers very soon. And I don't want them to be smoking marijuana with PCP in it. I really don't want that to happen. I know a lot of kids, and I know that they're smoking marijuana. I want to make it safer for them. Thank you. What I would like on March 19th for people to remember about me when they are casting their ballot is well, there's a really scary world up there, and really bad times coming. You just gotta look at the rest of the world and don't think you're gonna escape it, okay? And when Argentina went broke and the bank shut down, imagine the next day you can't get your money out of the bank. What are you gonna do? Remember me then, okay? What did they do? They had no choice. They had to go back to barter systems. Same in Russia, same in Greece. So, yeah, you got a right to all the misery you deserve and all the misery you vote for. But you could have voted for the only guy up here with a high-tech engineering degree, sharper than all the others, with answers that made sense to you all night. Because when you walk out that door, I bet you you can't remember one thing these people said because they said not one thing concrete. It was nothing more than, you need this, you need that, and I wish it for you. A wish list, but never how to get it done. And me, always how to get it done. The bad news is I don't know who to vote for. <laughs>